Thank you for joining us. My name is Steve Ho. I'm from Worthington Distribution. This is Worthington University. Uh, we're going to show you a, a brief uh, demonstration on how to set up a very basic grand stream system. Uh, in, one incoming line for uh, extensions, and this is just to get you through the basics to show you how we can quickly set up a system. The grand stream system is a very nice system because it has a lot of options. Uh, for example, I've got two phones here, we, which are the Android model phones, which uh, we think are very great if you want to do automation in addition to your phone service. I have a 7-inch touchscreen and a 4.3-inch touchscreen. Big difference is that this one has no buttons on it. This one still has traditional phone buttons on it. So if you have a user who wants to be able to have automation but really likes to use the regular phone buttons, we've all, we've all run into that with remote control. People want to have hard buttons on some of their devices. This is a great option for this. This costs less than $200 dealer. This uh, cost me about $150. So a very good price for that. Uh, this is the Grand Stream system. This is the PBX. I have this uh, put together where you have the main con main controller feeding into a switch, a PoE switch, which is now feeding out to the phone. Uh, like I said, the system is very very uh, versatile. I'm showing you one of many ways of setting up the system, but I think for most of our dealers, this is going to be the best bet for being able to, uh, you know, learn the system for the very first time, be able to get a system up and running in less than an hour. Okay, so in my configuration here, I have the network feeding into the grand stream system. I have an IP address that is received from my uh, network router. The grand stream system has a built-in router, so I'm going out of the grand stream system into a PoE switch feeding out to the phone. So all the phones are getting their IP address from the grand stream. By making this as a subnet of the system, all the phone traffic and then computer traffic on the network are separated. This way you're not going to have computers interfering with the phones or vice versa. Uh, while it's a rare occasion, it can happen in this way. We just kind of isolate it and avoid it from happening. Um, they have models of phones as little as $35 dealer. So this system, like I said, became very versatile. Someone doesn't have to get Android phones to use the system if they're just doing it as a basic phone system. All right, so I'm going to go to the PC. I'm going to show you how i actually programming. And you're going to see it's going to go pretty quickly and pretty smoothly. And as we go along, I'll take questions, and uh, you know, uh, Joel will let me know when I have a question answer. All right, so I'm going to move to the PC. Okay, so this is the login screen for the uh, Grand Stream PBX. Uh, admin, admin is the uh, default login IDs. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, quit the wizard. Uh, what I'm showing you is going to be kind of so simple that the wizard is actually get, would actually make it harder for you to do the work than to do it. It doesn't mean you can't use the wizard. It's just a, just the advantage. Every once in a while you'll see this uh, pop up whenever you make a change. Always just choose to apply changes and that way it uh, simplifies everything going for you. Give that a moment to go through. So every time we do that there will, will, be, will be a pause. That's a good time to ask questions. When you see me hit that button, ask a question. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to the PBX. Now, we've learned that a lot of people prefer three-digit extensions. The Grand Stream system, by default, uh, does four-digit extensions. So in order, order to make this simpler for our users, I go into Internal Options, go to my General, and I shorten the extension numbers. Now, for the first several extensions is pretty pretty simple. And I'm having now problems so uh, I think I got it now. Not a good start for so now. But basically I'm just deleting the last digit of each of the extension series. And mouse pad. Much better. Now, the system uses the 700 for uh, another feature, so if you don't want to put any extension numbers in the 700 series, what I'm going to do, I stopped off at 669 there for voicemail groups. So I'm going to go 670. 
six, seven, nine. Six, seven, nine. Six eight oh six eight nine six nine oh six. Go ahead and save this. Again, the whole part of this is just to put everything in a three digit extension format, which will make it easier for the user because if they only have, you know, twenty phones, what do they need four digit extensions for? So I've saved that, I gotta go up and apply the changes, and I'll move on to a new section if they, if anyone has any questions at this moment. On. Next session I'm going to go to is uh, feature codes. There's one feature that you always want to turn on it's called call park. What call park is is a little different than hold. Uh, because the system doesn't show line buttons, because obviously you don't have line buttons on the screens, uh, use a feature called call park. And what that feature is used for it allows you to put a call uh, in what we call a parking spot. So if I have a call for Joel and I want to give the call to Joel, I'll park the call. The system will tell me the call was parked at 700, and I'll say, Joel, you have a call for agency at 700. He picks up any phone, picks dial 700, and he has that call. So I've done that. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here and save. Apply the changes. And then move on. Now, next section we're going to go to, we're going to add extensions to the system. So. Now, you can add extensions individually, or you can add them in a batch. Now, in this configuration, we're going to have four extensions, and uh, we're going to we're going to assume this is a, is a residential system. So there went four extensions, and the first extension going in the kitchen is going to have the voicemail. This way, when calls come into the house, if nobody answers a call, it goes to the uh, kitchen phone, and then this way they can just pick up their messages when they go to the kitchen. So I'll go batch add extensions, and these are all SIP extensions or SIP phones. I'm going to start at extension 100, and I'm adding four extensions. This is the residence, and they want to be able to make international calls, so they give them international call. And since there's only one voicemail going to extension 100, I'm not going to enable it for all extensions. Otherwise, you could have voicemails on extensions that you don't want to find them on. Your SIP IAX password, that's a password that the system uses to log on to the system. So you really want to, want to create a password, a common password for all your devices. This way, you know what it is from device to device. So, this is a demonstration. I'm going to use A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. Obviously, you wouldn't use something a little bit more, you know, uh, more secure than that. Uh, and then the rest of these things uh, don't need to be changed here. So you can pretty much scroll down to the bottom and just hit Create Users. And I'm going to add these four extensions, and they're now part of the system. So I apply changes. Now, you don't have to apply changes every time the, the blue box comes up, but uh, you know you do want to do that before you change to a different uh, section of the program. Now, I'm going to make this, this the first extension with voicemail. I'm going to put a, uh, they have a random number of 710 in here. I'm going to use 1379, which is the four corners of the keyboard. I just use that because it's easiest for me to remember. I, I, as long as those four corners of the uh, telephone keypad, it's easier to remember. Okay, this is going to be the kitchen. And I enabled voicemail, and I want to go to one of the things and change the ring timeout to 15 seconds. If a call gets transferred to the kitchen and nobody answers it, uh, it, it you know, like you, you transfer, if you pick up the phone somewhere else and the call's not for you, uh, and you want to send, send them to, to the voicemail because you don't want to have to write a message, you can just transfer them to extension 100 and four rings. It'll uh, go to the voicemail. 
go ahead and save that. And then I, I'm not going I'm not going to apply because I don't have to apply why on the same screen. So the next room is going to be the living room. No voicemail turned on, so just do that. Next room is going to be the bedroom. Last room is going to be the Okay, now I'm going to apply changes. And I'm going to move on to the next set. A nice thing about using the grand stream phone system with the grand stream phones is that this will accept other SIP phones of the of, of Asterix uh, model. Um, is that there's a feature called zero config, which means that the system will go out and find the phones that are out there. So right now, the system uh, is trying to locate. All the grand screen phones. Oh, I have a question. Uh, good question. And the answer is uh, yes to certain phones. It won't have to be SIP phones. It wouldn't be uh, Ring or, or that nature uh, directly. Um, I, 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 I will back up a second and say. Because these are Android phones, you could bring them up on the Android phones, but it come, be coming up through the app, not through the system itself. If you're going to be bringing through the system, you would, would want a SIP uh, door station. Uh, and for example, we have Grandstream makes their own. Uh, we have uh, them from Leviton, and we have them from a company called Logenix. All three of them work very well with the Grandstream phone system. Uh, so there are door stations available, but they're not going to be the consumer type door stations like Ring or Skype or something like that. Again, you could bring them up on the Android apps on the phones, uh, but not as a SIP phone call. Um, that being said, these two model phones are the, are the two phones that have the built-in cameras and uh, you know the video screen, so these would be able to look at the IP door station. The other phones uh, that are, don't have the uh, Android or the video built into them will only be able to do an audio call on that. Okay, so the uh, any other questions before I continue on? Okay, so the system located four phones that are plugged into the network. Uh, it lists the models as as well as, as well as uh, their IP addresses and their MAC addresses. So now I know people. So if I had a whole bunch of different models, whole different phones of the same model, I would just go by the MAC address on the phone as far as which one was located where. So I'm going to uh, make these phones different parts of the system. So I'm going to make the kitchen the seven-inch touchscreen. That's the heart of the house, and that's where somebody might would likely want that to be. So I just go to account here, made that account extension 100, and I'm going to do a couple of uh, you know what's called MPK buttons, which is the uh, what we typically don't see speed dial buttons or by the way. So we have the call park. I always like to make that, that button number one because, again, that makes the call parking very easy to do as opposed to dialing a code. And I might want to have a busy lamp field for the living room and a busy lamp field for the master bedroom. And what these are basically is like a, you know, another term that you might know this as is DSS. A DSS or direct station selection basically allows you to know that somebody's busy on a call, so you know if your other extensions are busy. Uh, in addition to that, it allows you just to hit the button and dial that extension without having to dial the extension number. Obviously, in the house, you know you have four extensions; it's pretty easy to remember the extension number. But it, it's nice to be able to see who's on the phone and who's not. Okay. And then what I do here now, I send a notify to the to the phone. Now, what will happen is that phone over there will receive this information and it will come up and say kitchen and uh, you know show uh, its location in the system. I'm going to just do quickly the other ones and I'm not going to do the MPK buttons just for time. 
101 is the next one available, which happens to be the one we're, we're going to use. So we're going to, again, I'm not going to do the empty page this time, but I'm just going to save it. I notify, so I'm sending notify again, it's telling that this phone now uh, to uh, take its configuration from the system. So the two phones. Is the next available? So while we're doing this, all these phones will then be, will be being programmed with whatever I programmed here. Again, there's more I can program here with the MPKs and mind settings, but we're just making this a very simple demonstration. So now I can pick up any phone in the system, and this phone here now says it's the living room, and if I wanted to call the kitchen, and I believe I have the ringer off on the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when, these, when you do things live, you, you miss these things. Uh, yes, um, but I should be should have a yeah. It's always great when you're doing live work and it doesn't want to work for you. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Okay. So I I now have completed you know completed programming system so I can be able to communicate between the two different phones. I can also make this a video call between these two phones uh, because they had a video built into it. So I would pick this up, dial one hundred, and hit video call. It's now asking me if I want to, want to receive a video call. So that's a nice feature because one of the things to keep in mind is because this is an IP phone system, these phones don't even need to be in the same country. You could have these phone systems tied back to a grand string system and have a video call, video conference between two different countries. Okay, so any questions before I move on? No? Okay, then uh, what we're going to do now is to the phone system. Uh, connect up the lines and determine where calls are going to go. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to add, add ring groups. Now, ring groups are basically what, you know, when you want you know, groups of phones to act a certain way. In this case, we're going to create a new ring group and we're going to, tell, we're going to put all these phones in my incoming ring group. Again, because we're thinking of this as a house, there's really probably only going to be one incoming ring group. Uh, so I move all the phones in the house over to this ring group. Now, a reason why you might want a second ring group, maybe you want to have a day ring group and night ring group. Maybe one of those extensions is a child's bedroom and you don't want their phones ringing after 9 o'clock at night. You could actually uh, set a timer and at 9 o'clock a different ring group goes into play and their phones won't ring after a certain time at night. Now, I want all the phones to ring at the same time, so ring simultaneously. I only want it to ring about 15 seconds, which is four rings. That should be a sufficient time for anyone in the house to answer the phone. Uh, you can make it longer or shorter, depending on the size of the house. And then I want to enable a destination. So after 15 seconds, where do I want that call to go? Now I can leave it to extension, which means it'll, it'll go to the kitchen and ring the kitchen four more times, because I set that 15 seconds earlier. Or just have it go right to the kitchen voicemail. So I'll go voicemail kitchen. So now that voicemail is in the kitchen, so this way, you know, if somebody calls, it'll ring four times and go to the kitchen. So that's setting up the ring group. We're not done with that yet. So I'm going to apply the changes. And here's my uh, created extension 640 for the ring group. Incoming, all phones will ring. Here's all the phones in the group. Now what I'm going to do is go to set up what happens when a call comes in. Of course, I've got to create my analog lines. And in this, this case, we're going to say it's a, it's a residence. There's only one phone. So 
I'm just going to choose one incoming line. And I'm going to type in a name for it. It could be the name, phone number, whatever works for you. Now, further down here, there's a feature called Detect. Now, this is very important for you to use this feature because uh, even though there's standards, as you see listed up here, are standards for U United States of America, busy tone, congestion tones, these tones can change based on the local phone company you're using. By using Detect, you can actually uh, check all the codes in the phone. In this case, I only have one line, so I can't use Auto Detect. I would use Semi Auto Detect. And I would actually have it call my cell phone number. I would do it, we're not kind of hooked up to a live phone system, so I can't really uh, demonstrate this portion of it, but I would have it call my cell phone number. And then when it calls my cell phone number, it would tell me to answer the call and it tell me to hang, hang up the call. And that would allow me then to let it learn the uh, codes that uh, the phone system is plugged into. So this way, uh, the local phone service is plugged into. This way, it does that. Now, if you're using SIP trunks or a PRI, you wouldn't be using this feature. You only need to random one trunks. Now, if you have more than one phone line, you could actually have a call from one line to another and do this automatically. In which case, you don't even need to get involved. Just put in the phone number of the uh, of line two, and it'll do it automatically. You just hit detect. And it's done. After you've done the detecting. Apparently, I exited out. This is good. Okay, so let me go back in. So I have an analog line. So now we just need a direct call. A call comes in on the analog line. Want it to go to our ring group. So I can see that it's for income. So that's, you know, incoming line, phone's ring, goes ring group. Now, we're not talking about different conditions, at a time condition. If I want to create a second ring group for nighttime, I just create a, a time condition as far as what time I want the, the phones to switch over to the ring group where the children's line doesn't ring. Question. Yes, auto answer needs to be turned on in the phone set itself uh, to allow it to auto answer. Um, so one of the things you'll have to do is go into the programming of the phones. And I'll, we'll show you that briefly toward the end, a couple of uh, you know, key settings you can do in there. But yes, uh, it can be done with auto answer, hands-free answer. And you can do it for, for um, intercom only so you're not auto answering incoming calls. Okay, so we have, again, uh, our incoming line, doesn't matter what part. The caller ID pattern here is if you have a multi-line system or a SIP trunk uh, system coming in, you can have an ID pattern as far as which, you know, where those calls get directed. Um, you know, it's, everything here is defaulted and it just goes to the ring group income. Now to set up outgoing calls, we're going to use an outbound rule. Let me go back and apply the changes I made before I lose them. As I was saying, when you change screens, you can move messages. So make sure you save and apply as you go. So my analog trunk is still there. My incoming loop is still there. I have outgoing loop. This one takes a little bit of explaining because it uh, doesn't make sense at first. Now, as, as you go through the system, you will see these little icons that, that tell you that uh, give you help. So basically what I need to do, I need to create a pattern for an outgoing call. So for, a, for a, making a local phone call without any pre, uh, you know, any digits, like you know dial 9, something like that, I would just put in 7Xs. So what that is, that's seven digits. So whenever I, do, whenever I dial seven digits, it knows I want to make an outgoing call. So of course, I want to be able to make a regional call where I need my area code, but I don't need the one before it. It would be 10 digits. You know, 
three-digit uh, area code, and a seven-digit local exchange. If I want to make a long-distance call, it would be one and the number. So I, I can either put in 11 X's, or since we know it's going to be one, one and 10 X's. Now that's, that's, that's one, way, one way of doing this. So in this case here, I would use an analog trunk and go international. Now I'm going to, you know, kind of step off to the side for a second. Let's say that you have a reason where you want to be, or want to dial nine before an outgoing call. Some people are used to doing that in the business world. So I just put a nine here in front of all of these numbers. After the after the uh, the um, the underscore, put a nine, then go down here and strip the nine, strip the one digit at the beginning. And what will happen is now to make an outgoing call, local, long distance, or regional, you have to dial a nine first. Uh, if you have a situation where you have a home and a business uh, sharing the same phone system, you could actually have them dial a certain uh, digit to make a business call and a certain digit to make a, a uh, or two digits to make a, a personal call. This way, your calls are routed through the correct phone line. I'm going to take the nines off again. So there are a couple different ways you can set up these patterns to do uh, special things. Um, in this case, this is just someone's residence. They only have one phone line, so I'm going to leave it like this. And we'll call. So any other questions so far? Okay, so we're actually moving along very well. I mean, from what, what you're looking at right now is a, we're done. Uh, you know, as far as what I needed to show you as far as setting this is. I'm going to take you to more advanced things and show you a couple more uh, features that you can take advantage of. But that was it. So in less than half an hour, I just set up a, uh, a four phone system with voicemail in, uh, in the kitchen and uh, the ability to make outgoing calls. So uh, that's how simple the grant system has been to set up. So uh, we had the question about um, auto answer. So I need to log into the phone directly. So this is extension 103. OK, actually, I, mean, I can't log in the phone directly. Uh, because it created the subnet, um, these, these phones are in the subnet, and, I, and I'm logged on to the outside network. I'm going to try real quick, see if I can do that. That's a little shortcut to get into the phones, but it usually only works when they're on the same subject. No, it's not going to allow us to do that. Let me. Go ahead, question. That's actually very simple to do. There is a uh, an app called GS Wave is available from Grandstream. Uh, you would just basically create another extension. Back up here. Create an extension. And basically. Basically, the same same thing as all as everything we did for the the the, uh, the other extensions, except that what you're going to do, you're going to actually have the the phone come to a port in the in uh, your firewall directed to the system. So you're going to actually be using 
external IP address of this system. And so when the when call comes into your firewall, you open a port typically 5060, uh, forward that port to the grandstream system, and then you know the login information you see here, which would be the the password, which we were using A B C D one two three four. the cell phone. I've created another extension which will be for the cell phone. If I go into my settings, network settings, so the I would have to set, set my WAN address to a fixed address, and then I would I need to forward it. I need to need to forward uh, that port to whatever this IP address is that I set it set it for. Yeah. All right, yeah. and it's usually preferred to set this IP address to a fixed address. This way, if you do reboot, it's going to be there. Uh, in this network here, I have it set for root because I have uh, you know the subnet. That's created here, which is where all the other phones are located. You know, in this in this sub here, that's why I don't have access to this. Uh, another feature that you can have, and if the person who had the question about the auto answer, uh, give me a call offline, and I'll I can walk through it to you. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I just uh, have to pull the whole system apart to do that. Basically, it's just a matter of going into account settings, to the the menu here, or the web interface. And uh, we just turn on auto answer. It's a it's a second option down in the count settings. So it's very simple to do. And I wish I could show you it on the screen. <laughs> okay. Um, so a feature that a lot of people like about this system, and uh, I, I should talk a couple more features of the system. The system has about five hours worth of voicemail built into it, which means that you have the ability. To record as much, uh, you know, uh, message you want. You can also record calls on the system. That's that's going to depend on, you know, uh, legalities. We need to notify people that we're recording a call and, and of that nature. But it, it can be done. Um, if you wanted to go into an extension and, and get your voicemail forwarded to you, let me get back into PBX. So we'll go back to the kitchen, and let's say that you're going on an extended vacation and you don't want to. You don't want to have to call and check for messages. So I put in an email address here. Um, uh, hold on now, just by adding that and then enabling. Enabling emailing. You can, it can actually forward your emails as a, as a WAV file. So this would be your phone emails or, or, or whatever and allow you to actually uh, receive those messages. So actually, when you look, look here, uh, this looks a pretty generic way of setting this thing up. And you actually can just leave these things. Just hit test, put in your own email address, and it'll send you a test message. As long as you receive that test message, you don't need to make any changes. You don't have to create your own special um, email address for this to come from. If you want to use your own email service, you can just choose a client service and fill in the information. All right, so again, I want to just do, give you a basic setup. There are, there are tons of features you can actually do with this system, and uh, you know, as you get a chance to explore more, you're going to find more questions to ask. Uh, do we have any other questions that I need to answer? Yeah, um, I have not done that. I've we've used the GS Wave app and the Bria app. Those are the only two that we've used. 
um, again, as long as they're asterisk uh, compatible, uh, you, you should have no problem working. But if you, you find you know some features work great, some features don't work. Uh, we use Debria for both uh, you know audio and video, and it worked great. Uh, the brand screen works good for audio and video, um, and so you have those features uh, available to you. Um, but Lin Phone is something I just haven't tested. Uh, those are those questions. Um, again, this is Waterson Distribution. My name is Steve Ho. I want to thank you for coming, and if you have any questions, you can email us directly, and we'll be glad to answer them for you. Thank you very much.